Good day, everyone, and welcome to Sir Carl Easy Bath. So, for today, we're going to tackle about the quarter one, module two of Mathematics 8, which is all about problem solving involving factors of polynomials. So, the most essential learning competency that we are going to discuss today is the learner solves problems involving factors of polynomials. So, in this section, uh, we are going to apply the techniques that you have learned from the previous lesson about uh, factors of polynomials. We're going to use those um, techniques that you have learned in solving word problems. So, for today, we're going to solve four different problems. So, here, we have number one. The difference of two numbers is three. Their product is ten. What are the two numbers? Number two, find the three consecutive integers such that the product of the first two is 20 less than the product of the last two. Number three, the length of a rectangle is six centimeter more than its width. The area of the rectangle is 55 centimeter square. What are their dimensions? And the fourth problem that we're going to solve today is a photocopier manufacturer finds that the revenue R in thousands of pesos from the sale of X photocopiers is given by R of X is equal to 5X squared plus X. If the cost C in thousands of pesos of producing X photocopiers is given by C of X equals 4X squared plus 13X plus 16. How many photocopiers must be produced and sold in order for the manufacturer to break even? So those four um, word problems, uh, that those are the word problems that we are going to solve for today, applying the different techniques of factors of polynomial. So, let's begin. So, in solving math problems, we have to, to know the steps, okay, in solving math problems. So, these are the basic steps in solving any math problems. You could apply this one in any math uh, word problems. Number one, the first step is understand the problem, of course, okay. Number two, Devise a plan. Translate mathematical expression, I mean verbal expressions into mathematical expressions. Number three, carry out the plan. Okay, so you solve. And number four, look back. Check and interpret. So we're going to discuss one by one what are these steps in solving math problems. Okay, let's have number one. Understand the problem. This is an important step in solving word problems that will help you figure out what you need to solve, all right? To understand the problem, you must read the word carefully and analyze it. So in any word problems, <clears throat> it is very important that we should understand the problem, okay? We need to know what we need to figure out and we need to know what we need to solve, right? And for us to be able to do that one, we should read the problem carefully, okay, maybe twice or even thrice or three times, and we should analyze it carefully also so that we could fully understand what is the problem all about. That is the first step, very important. The second step is to devise a plan or translate. These are the probable options you may use to solve the problem based on your understanding. So since you have understood already the problem, it's the second step is for you now to translate it and make it into your own, um, make uh, mathematical expressions so that um, you could translate it into mathematical expressions and then you could solve it later on. 
Next, the third step is carry out the plan. And that is to solve. Right? So you will now perform your plans or selected opinions to solve the problem. So after you translate the problem, uh, you have your plans and selected options. It's now time to get a solution by solving it using a, a formula. Okay? And the last one, the last step is look back, check, and interpret. Okay? This is the step where you can check or validate if you have understood and applied the given in the problem. Okay? So the last step is look back. So you need to check and interpret. All right. So again, the four steps in solving math problems is number one, we have understand the problem. All right. Number two, devise a plan, translate. Number three, carry out the plan, solve. And number four, look back, check and interpret. So these four steps in solving math problems, we're going to use this one in solving the four problems that I have given to you in the beginning of this video. So let's now go to the first problem. Problem number one, it's all about number problem. The difference of two numbers is three. Their product is 10. What are these numbers? Okay, so step one, understand the problem. So in the problem, we know that there are two numbers, but we don't know what are those two numbers. Okay, so we let, okay, we let x, all right, for a while, okay, we let x as our first number, okay? Since we don't know the number yet, we try to use the variable x to represent our first number, all right? Right. So since the difference of the two numbers is a three, then we could say that our second number we can have it x plus three. Right? So x plus three, this would become our second number. Right? X plus three would be our Second number. All right. So we have two numbers that are unknown. The first number and the second number. We denote our first number as x. And we have x plus 3 as our second number. Okay. The second condition of our problem number 1 is that their product is 10. So, if we try to translate that one into a mathematical expression, we could just say that x times the quantity of x plus 3, that is our second number, is just equal to 10. Alright? So, we could come up with this mathematical um, statement x times the quantity of x plus 3 is equal to 10 since the product of the first number and the second number is equal to 10, right? Now, step number 3, carry out the plan. So we're going to solve right now, right? So we have x, right? So we have here x times x plus um, 3, that is equal to 10, right? Okay, since the product is 10. So x times the quantity of x plus 3, that is equal to 10. So if we distribute x to x plus 3, x times x, that would become x squared. 
right? And x plus 3, that x times 3, that is equal to positive 3x, right? Okay, so x squared plus 3x is equal to 10. And now after distributing it, we, we will try to equate the equation to 0. And so it becomes x squared plus 3x. 10 here, we transpose this one, that becomes negative. So minus 10 is equal to 0. All right? Now, x squared plus 3x minus 10, that is an example. This is an example of general trinomial. Okay, so we try to find the factors of negative 10 in which if we try to add it, it will give us a positive 3. So, we could have a factor actually of um, negative 2. Okay. We could have negative 2 and positive 5, right? Okay. So, the factor of the factors of x squared plus 3x minus 10 uh, using the general trinomial is just equal to x minus 2, all right, times x plus 5. And that is equal to, that is equal to 0. All right. So, we try to equate everything to 0. Uh, each factor, so the first factor is x minus 2 is equal to 0. So our x would become positive 2. Transpose it over the other side, 0 plus 2, that becomes 2. And then the second factor, which is x plus 5 is equal to x plus 5 is equal to 0. Plus 5 is equal to 0, then if we transpose that, it becomes negative 5. So x is equal to negative. Wait, wait, wait. x is equal to, let me just erase this one. x will be equal to negative 5. All right? So basically, here we have two values of um, x. The first one we have x is equal to 2. Right, and the uh, second one is x is equal to negative 5. All right, so our x plus 3, the second number, okay, the second number, x plus 3, so our second number is this just equal to 5. All right, and here, the second number here is um, negative 2, All right. Right. So, step four, look back, check, and interpret. Okay? So, the first number that is equal to 2. All right? And x, the second number, x plus 3. Now, since, three, uh, since x is equal to 2, then 2 plus 3 is just equal to Five, right? So we have what are the two numbers? We have two and five, right? And the second one we have here x is equal to. No, no, let's go back first. X is a uh, two and five, right? The first number is two. The second one is five. If we try to um get the difference 5 minus 2 the answer is 3 it satisfies our problem here and if we try to multiply their product 2 times 2 times 5 it will give us 10 right so it satisfies okay so 2 and 5 is is one of the answers okay now if x is equal to negative x is equal to negative 5 Okay, then x plus 3, okay, 
So we all know that x is equal to negative 5 plus 3. Okay, so x, a negative 5 plus 3, that will give us negative 2. So our second pair is negative 5 and negative 2. Okay, if we try to get the difference here, the answer would become... Um, negative and the answer is 3 and if we try to multiply them negative 5 times negative 2 the answer is 10 okay so for the problem um what are these numbers so it could be the pair of 2 5 and it could be also negative 2 and negative 5 do you understand okay so that is our problem number one. Let us now have problem number two. Um, this is a consecutive integer problem. Problem goes like this. Find three consecutive integers such that the product of the first two numbers is 20 less than the product of the last two numbers. All right. Problem number two, consecutive integer problem. So step one, understand the problem, okay? So in the problem, we need to find three consecutive integers, okay? So how would we try to understand that one? Three consecutive numbers. So we could let x, okay, we could just let x be the the first, okay, of the consecutive um, integers. Let x be the first number, okay, and x plus 1, this would be our second number, okay, this would be the first number, first, okay, number, x plus 1, this would be the second number, All right? Second number. Please bear with my handwriting. And x plus 2, okay, as the third integer. Okay. All right. So the three consecutive integers in which that we are going to find that one, and uh, we denote that one as x, the first integer, x plus 1, since they are just consecutive, so it's just x plus 1, and then x plus 2 for the third um, integer. So our three integers here is x, x plus 1, the second, and x plus 2, the third um, integer. So here... We try to devise the plan, um, translate. We know that the first two, okay, so the product of the first two numbers, so x times x plus 1, all right? So x times x plus 1, that is the product of the first two numbers. And the product of the last two numbers that is x plus 1, all right, times x plus 2, all right? Okay, now, our condition here is that the three consecutive, find the three consecutive integers such that the product of the first two numbers is 20 less than the product of the last two numbers, okay? So, we can just state that one as x times x plus 1 is equal to x plus 1 right, times x plus 2 minus 20 
okay since it is 20 less than the product of the last two numbers right okay so that would be our um equation now x times x plus 1 is equal to x plus 1 times x plus 2 minus 20 okay so let us now try to to solve the problem right so again let me just copy it. x times x plus 1 is equal to x plus 1 times x plus 2 minus 20 right okay so and then let us try to simplify this one right so we distribute x to x times 1 uh, x plus 1 so x times x that is equal to x squared and then x times 1 that is just x so plus x this is equal to okay um x times x that is x squared we're going to follow the foil method they, they, since these are multiplying binomials okay so and then we have one times x that is x right inside and then outside x times 2x x times 2 that is 2x so 2x plus x the total that is 3x so plus 3x here okay and then the last one okay uh, the last term 1 times 2 that is 2 plus 2 minus 20 all right so we're going to simplify right so x squared and x squared you can just cancel that one okay and then here the x when we transpose that one that will become x minus 3x is equal to negative 18 since 2 minus 20 that is equal to negative 18 so simplify uh, x minus 3x that is negative 2x is equal to um, negative 18 right and divided by negative 2 to find x okay so x will be just equal to negative 18 divided by negative 2 the answer is 9 right so our x is equal to 9 all right and so our x plus 1 the second integer will be just equal to 9 plus 1 is equal to 10 and then our x plus 2 the third integer so x is 9 9 plus 2 that is equal to 11 all right so our three consecutive um integers okay the answer is 9 10 and 11 so therefore these are the three consecutive um integers okay so let's see if the let's try to uh, look back and check and interpret if it will satisfy our um, problem here okay the product of the first two so that is 9 and 10 so 9 times 10 this is equal is the product of here the the product of the first two integers is just equal to 20 less than okay, 10 times 11 is less than 20 let's see if it's true so 10 times 9 or 9 times 10 that is equal to 
90 which is equal to 10 times 11 that is 110 110 minus 20 then 90 is equal to 90 all right now since it satisfy our problem then the three consecutive integers therefore the three consecutive integers are 9 10 and 11 so this would be our final answer all right now let us answer problem number three uh, this is a, an example of a geometry problem okay the length of a rectangle is six centimeter more than its width the area of the rectangle is 55 square centimeters what are the dimensions all right now when it comes to geometry problem uh, for us to understand the problem we try to draw okay the the shape or the figure so that we can uh, somehow understand the problem All right step one understand the problem so there is a rectangle so, um, let me draw a rectangle here all right say let it say that this is the rectangle okay now this is the length and this is the width all right okay so the length of the rectangle is six centimeter more than its width so if this is the width okay w then the length is just w plus six right and the total square um the total area of the rectangle is 55 square centimeter okay all right so area of a rectangle is just equal to length times width right and our area of the rectangle in this particular problem is just equal to 55 okay and our length that is just equal to since it is six centimeters more than its width so we can just have it as w plus six all right and our width is just simply w all right okay so this would become now our um mathematical statement all right so step three carry out the plan and solve so again let me just rewrite that one so 55 is equal to w plus six times w right so let us now solve it All right okay so 55 is just equal to w times w that is w squared okay and six times w that is equal to positive six w now in order for us to to get to solve for this we need to equate this one to zero so we can rewrite this one as w squared plus six w minus 55 is equal to zero now again this is an example of a general trinomial so again we're going to look for the factors of negative 55 in which if we add that one it will give us positive 6 and what would that be 
that would be positive 11 and negative 5. So, five, negative 5 times 11, that would give us negative 55. And if we try to add that one, 11 plus negative 5, it will give us 6. So, if we factor out W squared plus 6W minus 55, the answer would be W plus 11. Okay. And W minus 5. We're going to equate that one to 0. All right. So, W plus 11 equals 0. It will give us W is equal to negative 11. So, since there is no negative dimension, then we could not have negative 11 as our answer for the week. Now, let's try this one. W minus 5 is equal to 0, then our width is equal to, wait, wait, let me just erase it. So, W will be equal to positive 5. So, our width is 5, and of course, automatically, our length is since it is plus 6 so 5 plus 6 that is 11 all right so our width that is equal to 5 and our length and our length which is equal to w plus um 6 and since w is equal to 5 okay plus 6 so our length is equal to 11 all right so what are the dimensions our width is 5 centimeter okay and our length is 11 centimeters okay with 5 centimeters and our length is 11 centimeters if we try to multiply that one 5 times 11 it will give us an area of 55 square centimeters and it satisfies our problem all right so that would be our answer for problem number three all right let us now move on to our last our final word problem that we're going to answer today okay, this is all about real life problem problem number four and it goes like this a photocopier manufacturer finds that the revenue R in thousands of pesos from the sale of X photocopiers is given by R of X is equal to 5X squared plus X. If the cost C in thousands of pesos of producing X photocopiers is given by C of X is equal to 4X squared plus 13X plus 64, how many photocopiers must be produced and sold in order for the manufacturer to break even. All right, okay. So step number one, understand the problem. Okay, so here we are looking for how many photocopiers must be produced and sold. All right, so we will just let X, okay, X, X would be the number, okay, number of photocopiers number of photocopiers okay. let's see All right so x would be the number of um would be the number of photocopiers that that must be produced and sold. And when we say break even, actually, all right, um, we need to understand that if the problem says break even, it means equal, all right? 
So break even means equal. So in this particular problem, the revenue, let's just denote that one as R of X, is just equal to C of X, the cost. Okay? So that is our um um, understanding there of the of the problem that the revenue right um, given by the formula r of x and the cost are just equal all right okay so easy we just need to copy the formula and equate them together right so our r of x that is 5x squared plus x so we try to copy that one 5x squared plus x okay and that is just equal to the formula of the cost that is 4x squared plus 13x plus 64. All right. Okay. So our equation becomes 5x squared plus x is equal to 4x squared plus 13x plus 64. We're going to solve that one so that we could get the value of x. So again, that becomes um, so for step 3, carry out the plan and solve. That is 5x squared plus x is just equal to 4x squared plus 13x plus 64. Great. So we're going to need to um, simplify all these things. All right. So we're going to equate this one to 0. So 5x squared. Okay. 4x squared, we're going to transfer it to the other side. So it becomes negative 4x minus 4x squared. Okay, and then our x plus x here, and then 13x, we're going to transpose that over the other side, so it becomes negative 13. So negative 13x. Same thing, 64, transpose it to the other side, so that becomes negative 64. That is equal to, that is equal to 0, okay? So combine like terms, 5x squared minus 4x squared, that will give us only x squared. All right. And x minus 13x, that will give us only negative 12x. And minus 64 is equal to zero so now we now have another general trinomial x squared minus 12x minus 64 is equal to is equal to zero okay so since this is a general trinomial again we need to find a factor or factors of negative 64 in which if we try to add it will give us negative 12 and what are the factors of negative 64 that will give us a sum of negative 12 that is negative 16 negative 16 and 4 right okay so to factor we need to factor x squared minus 12 x minus 64 equals 0 so that we could get the value of x right so the factored form is just equal to x minus 16 and x 
plus 4. Okay, that is equal to 0. If you notice, we are just using general trinomials here. Right? So, x minus 16, if we try to equate that one to 0, x minus 16 is equal to 0, then x would be equal to 16. Okay? Remember that x is our number of photocopiers that must be produced and sold. So here, x plus 4 equals to 0. x plus 4 is equal to 0. Then x would be equal to negative 4. And since this is negative, so we will just disregard this one because we are looking for the numbers of photocopiers and it could not be a negative value. So we will accept x is equal to 16 in which that will answer our um, our problem here. How many copiers must be produced and sold? That would be 16. But step four, look back, check, and interpret. Let us try to check if it will satisfy our um, formulas, the formulas that are given in our problem. Okay, so we have here um, for the revenue, R of X, right? That is that is equal to. Uh, let me just erase that one. Okay, for the revenue, the formula would become uh, the formula would be five x five x squared plus x, right? So, our x is 16, so we could have, that would be 5 times 16 squared plus 16. Okay, so 16 squared, this is 2, 16 squared, 16 times 16, that is 256, and 256 times 5, that is equal to 1,280, right? And plus 16, our R of X, for a while. Then our R of X would be equal to 1,000, 296, right? And let's see if our cost would give us 1,296 as well. So, our C of X is equal to 4X squared plus um, third. 16x plus 64. All right. Okay. So that is equal to 4 times 16 squared plus 13 times 16 plus 64. Alright, so 16 squared, that is 256, 256 times 4, that is 1,024, alright, plus 13 times 16, that is 203, alright, plus 64, and so, 1024 plus 203 plus 64 that will give us a total also of 1296 so our revenue and our cost are just equal 1296 therefore to answer the problem how many photo photocopiers must be produced and sold in order 
for the manufacturer to break even, the answer would be there would be 16 photocopiers. All right, that would be our final answer. So there you have it, um, ladies and gentlemen, and to all of my students, uh, we have answered all the four problems. I hope you understand uh, the explanation on how to get the answers of the word problems that are inside your modules. Okay, and thank you very much for watching this video. Um, easy math. Sir Carl, easy math. Once again, thank you for watching. Goodbye.